Welcome to Thrive, the podcast. Today, I'm speaking with Alu Ola Tuji, Nigerian artist who has basically created opportunity as a fine artist and risen to exhibit with Saatchi Art in London, Germany, and Holland, and is looking forward to bringing his art to bigger audiences around the world. I saw you through, we have a load of mutual friends and I noticed your profile because you also seem to be exhibiting your art with the Saatchi Gallery. Yes. And I thought that was a really interesting story. So I'd love for you to share with listeners, you know, your story, what's yeah. happened for you? Because obviously not everyone gets to be connected to Saatchi Gallery. Yeah. Who you are, how you grew up, what's your okay. background? And then how did you connect to the Saatchi Gallery and start selling your art and become an artist? The, the whole thing. Okay. Um, so, okay, first of all, first of all um, my name is Ali Walatunji. Um, I am a pencil artist. I draw with pencil and acrylic paint. Okay. So um, my story, I grew up in Lagos. I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria, with my family, my, my grandma. I lost my mom when I was eight months old, when I was very young. Mm. It's my dad, too. I lost my dad, too, when I was eight months. Ah, OK, OK. So you had your mom, but not your dad. No, I lost my dad and my mom, the both of them. Ah, both of them? Yes, when oh, I was eight wow. months. Wow. So let me say literally, I've not seen them before. I've not, I don't recognize them. I only see their pictures. And um, I grew up with my grandma. Mm. So I, and okay, um, talking about our art, I started working at my uncle's printing office when I was 12. So it gave me, it gave me this inspiration to know more about colors. I fell in love with colors since then. Like I've always I've always worked with colors, you know. You know, printing office we're always using um ink, cyan, magenta, yellow mm -hmm. and black gives us a full uh, um impression of mm -hmm. your understand. So that's how it that's how it is for us to you know there's um bond sienna that gives us the the actual face of the of the person we are drawing. It depends on the color of yeah. your understand. So what? then about drawing, I I started drawing when I got to when I got to my my university. There's okay. this drawing, there's this drawing I saw. I was I was so like I was so fascinated. I was so I was I didn't know what to do, you know. I was like, wow, what is this? This is crazy. I must do this. I must be able to do this. I can't do this. You know, I could not take my eyes off it for a couple of minutes, couple of hours. Mm -hmm. I was still there looking at that piece of art. You know, so did you I go asked, to university to study art or something else? No, I studied fashion. Are oh, you studied fashion? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the guy was like, he was the one that did the drawing. I was like, I love the drawing. I could not afford it then. So I was like, okay, that can you teach me how to paint? He said he could not teach me that I should go learn how to paint myself. I was like, okay, thank you. So um, you know, um in fashion, we had this course live drawing in yeah. fashion. Uh -huh. So that is is that course that I used to like teach myself the more every time, mm -hmm. every time there is always an offense. Like if I'm always making sure there's an offense I commit. So if I commit an offense, they give me up to twenty drawings or thirty drawings to go draw for two days. Oh, so I you deliberately try to create this <laughs> exactly. So I create I create two I create twenty to thirty drawings to 40 drawings in two, three days. So that's what like really taught me to be very strong and and at the end of the day, 
professionally because I didn't have a family then to, you know, to help and everything. So at the end of the day, I made art something that um I used to like feed myself, you know. Mm. So that's it. Mm. Nice. So how so did you complete your fashion studies as well and go on to create fashion as well as the artwork? Yes, I I I completed, but I did not um, go into fashion. Okay. I, I I can also I can also create fashion fashion materials. I can I can create a a bespoke wear, you know, um, a suit. I can create a suit. I can create a wedding gown. But I I am not doing that because I don't really like doing that. What I like doing is art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so maybe you see that maybe later those things might merge for you. Yes, exactly. I know it's I know I'm I'm still going to go into fashion. I hope you understand. I'm still going to go into fashion very well. Mm -hmm. I just want to I just want to enjoy the world of art. For this time, I want to exhibit all over the world, like all over the world. I've done up to with Amsterdam, London, um, Australia, um, um, Germany. I've done up to like seven countries now. That's awesome. So, in yeah, what so time span? In what time frame did that happen for you? Just a year. Just a year. Wow. So tell us, how did you get discovered? Because, you know, it's it's a journey to get into that kind of an audience. Mm, actually, you know, it's not about being discovered. Most times you have to you have to push yourself out there too. Because if you are just painting at home and you are just keeping your art at home, you don't want to market. I want to market. I want to sell. I want you to let the world know what's... I just, it's just a kind of... It's just a kind of... Um, this is what I want thing. Mm -hmm. you know, some, people, some people want to just draw and keep in the house. I don't want that. I want to draw. I want to sell. I want to exhibit all over the world. I want to show my art all over the world. I want people, I want people to always mention my name. I want to go to award shows. I want to, you understand, that is what I want. So some people don't want that. So that is, they are doing what they want. I am doing what I love. So how did you first um, begin to push your art out to get it into the market, to get people to notice your work? <clears throat> okay. Um... The first thing I did was, should I say there is this exhibition I did at Lon in London. I could not attend it. It was with my friend, Nicholas, Nicholas Ferguson. Okay. So we did this exhibition together. It was a duo. It was just me and him. His work and mine. Ferguson. Is that what you yes. said? How did you two meet then? Uh, we met, we met online. And we became very good friends and then like we became very, very good friends. We met online and we became the best of friends. We did we have done exhibitions together and you understand. I sometimes I send my works to his place. Yeah, I, I trust him so much to be my friend. Yeah. So I'm not the thing is we've not met before face to face. Yeah, okay. But, but he's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so he had your work and he was the one who put it into the exhibition in London. Exactly, yes. Yourself in person. Yeah, I could not do that myself because I could not go to London that time. The the funds to go there. What I just did for, I just did the visa. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was the visa that's the issues. Ah. The, ticket, the ticket is easy for me to get to. I can get a ticket. You know, the ticket is not it's not even about the expense, it's about how to get it. So I can get the ticket. I yeah. get um, I have my passport. The only thing that is hard for me is the visa. But okay, so they don't back you in that. It helps though when you have connections in London, because they can vouch for you for getting the visa. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so how did it go at that show? It went well. The show went well. It was it was an amazing one. I don't know how how it like. I was not present, so I don't know how it went. But you know, due to what I heard, what people said, the review, the headlines, the London newspapers that you know published it, the headlines and everything said it went well. So that's the, that's the things I believe. Mm -mm. yeah for sure and this then i i suppose then it get just led to the next one yeah yeah so after then after the london show i did that i did one with sachi gallery in australia okay mm. how did you so, make that connection through through that first show through them writing about you in the first show and all of that no not at all the sachi gallery i've been on sachi since three years ago okay so i just put up my work for sachi and i was accepted mm, okay yeah so and we did the show that was last year and before the year ended i did one in miami too mm. these ones you could go to yourself in miami the u.s yeah so i could not go there myself so uh no still no Okay. Yeah. Nice. I saw I've not been to I've not been to any of my foreign exhibitions. Before. You haven't been to any of them yet. Oh wow. It's a matter of time. <laughs> there, yeah. So I mean, how are you developing your your business and your work? Well, I'm developing it fine. Um in Nigeria, we use this word, we are pushing. So mm. I'll say I'm pushing, you know, because that's how, that's how this thing is. That's how businesses can be sometimes, you know, if you, if you spend a lot and you gain little, sometimes you spend little and you gain a lot. Mm. So that's how businesses can be sometimes. Mm. Mm. Presently in Nigeria, I don't have any canvas work in Nigeria. So I have um I the I only have paperworks in Nigeria. Like almost all of my works in Nigeria are paperworks. Even the one behind you now? Yes, this one is paper. Oh wow. Okay. So when you send your piece abroad, what do you send it on? Well, I use DHL to send it and um they accept it over there, you know, and give me a reply that is accepted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do the exhibition. Okay. So is that rolled canvas? It's still paper? Or how is it? Shipped? Yes. They're, they're, um, actually, I just started sending paper last year. Mm -hmm. I just started sending paper last year. Because it was always canvas I've always used. But when I moved to this apartment, I started sending, I started using paper. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also design websites, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I is, that your, is that like a day job away from the painting? Um, It's not a day job from, away from the painting. It's like just a side also, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you don't get to do it for a company, you're doing it by yourself. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what's, so I get your vision is to exhibit all over the world and how helpful are Saatchi for you in terms of, do they give you support as an artist? Do they develop you or not really? How does it work? You mean, you mean Saatchi Arts? Yeah. Well, okay, Saatchi Arts, um... Such art helps, such art develops um, artists, yes. I'll be honest, I I have, I'm happy I'm on such art, let me just put it that way. I'm happy I'm on such, because such art is one of the biggest in the world, one of the biggest online galleries in the world. So it's, it's just a very good platform to be in for an artist. Mm. You say when I do the exhibition or to my friends, sometimes my friends buy from me. Sometimes people I know, 
sometimes the exhibitions, you know. But actually, what gives me the more money or the financial right now is not the arts, I'll be honest. Okay. What is it? Um... It is the side of, like I said, you know, I I open websites. I'm also, I'm a videographer too. I do videography. I'm also a printer, like I said. Okay, yeah. So those are the things. But art is something like I put money on. In fact, last year, I spent a lot of money on art, but I didn't get the money back. Yeah, but it's an investment. Exactly. Yeah, that's the way it is with most of creative endeavors, right? We put them the effort in and the time in and the talent in. You never know when that's going to return. Where do the ideas come from? What what does the art represent? Ah, stories behind my art. Um actually, okay, let me start from well, every 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 art has its own story, you know. A different art artist has its own story. Okay, there is this collection I'm working on, and I'll be honest, you know, sometimes collections have this story that tallies with each other together. But I'm telling you now that my my collection is each collection, each art in a collection has its own different story. Mm -hmm. Everything about my art is um like every story about my art is about my life story. What has happened to me over the years, you know, um where I find myself, where I'm going to, my dreams, my illusions, hallucinations, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Like about me that I, I need to like I can let the world know you know so that is why I put on my heart most times so that painting behind you tell us the story of this one behind you you can see it very well right yeah yeah it looks like a road and yeah. there are all these buildings on this road and then there are different people reaching out you human hands and a robot hand do you know that my paintings, I use my hand, my actual hand. I see. As reference. Yeah, yeah. I notice. <laughs> I use my actual hand as a reference. And if you check my drawing, if you check my progressions, I use my hand for the for the paintings. And why I use my hand is because my paintings are supposed to seem real to me. I hope you understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard what you said. They're supposed to feel real and to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They're supposed to seem real to me. Um, I heard that Van Gogh used to use his blood. He cuts wow. a part of himself to use his blood because he wants to see the, the reality in what he does. And the thing is, um, actually, this painting was was one time I was lost in my dream. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you, you know, imagine if you are, let's, let me see if I can turn this thing off. This camera, okay, you can turn. You see, imagine if you are standing in front of this, in front of something like this, and you are looking forward. Mm. Yeah. You don't know where you are. You don't know where to go. You are just looking forward. I hope you understand. You're looking forward, but the distraction is all these different hands and arms are reaching out. Exactly, exactly. And what are they saying? These arms, different arms. Some are asking for help. Some are helping. And then this robot is... Okay, so people are escaping as well, these buildings. A lot of detail. Exactly. There's I added like, a lot of a lot of details to it. Yeah, so there's like a story within the story. 
There's the hands and then there's what's going on in the buildings. The thing about this painting is that this painting has, um, should I say, it has this neon effects. Okay. Like in the dark now. Mm -hmm. it's, this this gold, golden parts, there are some greenish parts in the painting that has this neon luminous effects. Okay. So when it's dark, you still see those pieces of the painting coming out. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's always going to be shining out at you when you walk past exactly. the hall or the, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Do you do that in all your paintings or just some of them? I do it in all my paintings, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of my paintings. I do it in all of my paintings. This one now, this one not as it is like this. He has this, he has this luminous effect. The golden parts, the golden, the golden, this thing are golden sparks. Mm -hmm. They are called golden sparks. I imported them from Germany. Oh, you put Those them in from Germany? Why Germany? Yeah. Because that's where I can, that's where I can get them. That's where, that's the only place I can get them. I didn't see any golden sparks um, from Amazon. Um, from Amsterdam, I didn't see any golden sparks. So, and uh, um, easy brush too. I asked them. I didn't see any golden sparks. I asked um uh, Atizia too. Atizia that is from this Greece, this Greece company. I didn't see any golden sparks. So it was only Germany I saw the golden sparks. I was like, ah, let me just order. It was quite expensive, but for real, it's better to make your painting expensive. And it has to look expensive mm -hmm. than to, for it to look cheap. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I guess the thing is, it's also about the longevity of the painting, right? The, the, the value of art is in its longevity. Usually when you create a piece of art that's valuable, it will last for many years. It's not something that's going to disintegrate. So the material and the quality of the material will reflect this. So... Yeah, beautiful. I love the vibrancy and the message and the story. It pulls you in, you know. I think the pieces I've seen of your art is they're all a little bit like that. You know, they draw you in that you want to know what is going on in this piece. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you can want to do what you want to do, but... If you are doing what you want to do, you will stay there for a very long time and you will not you will not be selling anything or just be there. <laughs> you understand? So, so I asked like, okay, fine. You don't like them. No, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I said, if I can start creating new styles. Now, when I started creating the ants, you know, I started with letter, letter to my ex. That one with two ants. I want to hold themselves like this. That blue, that one with blue background. Mm. Yeah. So when I did that, there is this gallery lady. She saw it. She was like, wow, this is amazing. I love this. Can you bring it to my place so I can exhibit it for you? I was like, no, 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 no. You people rejected me that time. I can't, I can't stay here. I need to move on. I'm sorry. She was like, no, no, she's going, to, she's really to offer, ready to offer me something good for it. I said, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I would, I'd rather exhibit it somewhere good. So I sent it to um the other aspect, Australia. Mm. So after the exhibition there, I just, we just didn't, like, I didn't say it then. I didn't say it, and I've not even sold it till now, that piece. Mm. But I didn't want to sell it for that amount she was given. My okay. customers are based all over the world. That's why I want to. That's why I want to sell all over the world. Mm. They are not just based in a country or in somewhere or in a state or no. Mm. They are based all over the world. So where my customers are based mostly, um, I sold well the most in Nigeria and London. Only Nigeria and London, those other countries, I'll be honest, I'm not so in any other country. But it's a great start. You got started. That's what counts. So, yeah. you know, that's what's important.
you know? So nice talking to you. Yeah, you too. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and subscribe to the podcast. If you would love to reach out to my guest or myself, visit the show notes where you'll find all our contact information. Thank you so much for listening.